I'm Justin Grubb, and right now I'm in Costa Rica, and this is Running Wild. I'm Justin Grubb and right now I'm in San Jose, Costa Rica where we're about to embark on an amazing journey across Costa Rica. Our mission is to see as many ecosystems and animals as possible. Also, we're going to meet up with researchers and guides across the country to see what they're doing for conservation. Now we are eager to head out to the Costa Rican wilderness, so we catch a bus in San Jose and drive seven hours across the country only to get on a boat and travel two more hours on the tropical river to get to the town of Bahia Drake. We're here in Bahia Drake, which is a small village tucked into the corner of Drake Bay. The only way to get here is an hour boat ride down the river, so it's very remote. So with the help of some locals, we're going to explore the city. The town of Bahia Drake is a remote village with a few buildings and just two supermarkets. It is a town of just 1,000 people and it gets its name because it was believed to have served as a port for Sir Francis Drake in the 16th century. What makes this place a traveling treasure is the incredible people and its pristine ecological condition. Its relative remoteness from the beaten track has protected this place from overdevelopment and as a result this area has incredible beaches, rainforests and coral reefs. That's so fresh. Muy rico. So this is the bridge that our friend was taking us to and this is going to get us across the river. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We meet up with the local with an ATV who has agreed to take us an hour into the rainforest so we could finally get to our first travel destination, the Tamandua Research Station. So this is the second stop on our trip through Costa Rica, and we arrived late last night to an ATV. This is the Tamandua Biological Station, and let me tell you, this place is remote. There is no electricity, and we got here after a 40-minute drive in an all-terrain vehicle. We're here to meet Rebecca Kiros, who is a researcher and guide here, to figure out more about this really unique place. So this is the Tamandua Biological Station, and this is Rebecca. So what exactly do you do here? Uh, well, we, we are planning to do conservation, environmental education. We are receiving already tourism. Uh, that's mostly our principal activity for the moment, but we have more plans for the future. Okay, mm -hmm. what kind of conservation projects have you guys done? Uh, well, we have some uh, tramp cameras in the forest, so we have been taking pictures from all the mammals around and different animals, so we are like looking what is around, you know, to, to see what we have, uh, especially endangered animals. In these photos that I'm telling you, uh, we have taken pictures from cats, you know, which is very, very hard to see. Mm -hmm. And we have four from the five cats in the Osa Peninsula already in, in photographs, which is pretty good. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what kind of education projects do you guys do here? Um, well, we have received uh, groups from, from town, you know, from the school in town. Uh, we have talked about trees, about animals, uh, about mammals, how to take, uh, how you say, footprints from the trails with the kids, yeah. so things like that. So what kind of crazy stories do you have about this place and animals? Crazy stories. Sometimes you can see animals inside, you know, like snakes. The last time an ocelot came over. Oh, yeah. Crazy things that you don't see so often. Thank you so much for the interview. Uh, okay, you ready to hit the trail now? Sure, let's All right, go. Let's go. <laughs> so into the rainforest we went. And this type of forest is incredible and gets its name because of the amount of rain it receives in a year. And for the Costa Rican rainforest, that's an average of 270 inches. As we explore the rainforest, it becomes apparent that it is absolutely teeming with life. You know, they say Costa Rica contains 5% of the world's biodiversity. And this is because the tropics are a region of relative stability. 
What I'm standing right next to is a huge root. You can see this entire tree is surrounded by these large roots, and this is the buttress of the tree. Because the nutrients in the rainforest is all found in the top soil, and so these roots are very, very shallow, the trees go up way high. They're tall, tall trees. And so these roots extend outwards so much because it needs to support the large tree that's all the way up there. After a long day of hiking in the rainforest, it was time to dive in and cool off. As I swam across the small watering hole, I quickly found an interesting small cave with a few bats. There are 110 different species of bats here in Costa Rica, and this is an incredible amount of species to find in one area. Bats are the only mammal capable of sustained flight, and their limbs have developed into wings, where the flaps of skin in between the bat's fingers make up the wing. Bats also use echolocation to move around and to find prey because they are nocturnal animals. After a while in the rainforest, we headed back to base camp to meet our chef, Giovanni. And to our surprise, they were waiting on us to help catch tonight's dinner. Yeah, we came Hey, come on, venga, venga, venga. Ah, see. Hey. So what is this? A guava. A guava? Yeah. It's Costa Rica guava. It's so hard to open it. Yeah, where does it come from? It comes Is it going from a tree? Strong ball from the tree. Oh, it's, it's this. It feels kind of weird. Yeah, now it's the sea, only the outside. It kind of tastes a little bit like apple. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out the taste. It's a little one here. It's like apple, but it also feels like cotton, like yeah, in your mouth. It feels and that's the seed. No, right. the seed is not pretty. No. I actually kind of like that. It's very sweet. Fantastic dinner, fantastic place, a great end to a really long day. I'm really excited to be sitting here and eating this Costa Rican meal. After seeing the incredible rainforest, it is time to trade out my hiking boots for flippers and my backpack for an oxygen tank because it just so happens that one of the greatest places to scuba dive in Costa Rica is Caño Island, which is located off the Osa Peninsula. We head out into the Pacific Ocean towards Caño Island to get a glimpse of the incredible amount of ocean life found here around this region. The strong Pacific current flows near here and thus brings a lot of pelagic organisms including these dolphins that love hanging out by the boat and swimming along in the wake. The sun is shining, the water is relatively clear, and the water temperature is 78 degrees. One of the first things I noticed about the water here is that, just like the mainland, it too is teeming with life. Everywhere you look, there are schools of fish and flashes of color. It doesn't take long before I get an up-close look at one of my favorite animals, wild sharks. 
These are white-tipped reef sharks, and they are often found lying at the bottom of the reef during the day because they are nocturnal predators. And this species of shark is one of the few species that can breathe without constantly swimming. Most sharks must physically push water through their gills in order to respirate, but these sharks have muscles that they engage to force water through their gills. This allows them to sit in one spot and rest for a while. These sharks are at the top of the food chain here and survive off of the abundant fish. They use their ampullae of Lorenzini to sense and hunt struggling and moving fish. The ampullae of Lorenzini is a jelly-filled pore on the face of the shark, and this allows the shark to sense electromagnetic waves in the water. All fish give off these waves when they swim or when they struggle, and so the sharks detect that and that's how they find their food. Sharks are entirely made out of cartilage, which is the stuff that our nose and ears are made of. This allows them to be flexible and extremely agile in the water. So a common misconception is that sharks are incredibly dangerous and aggressive, but as you can see, I'm swimming with these guys just fine. Another apex predator that made its presence known is the stingray. And this animal is closely related to the sharks that we had just seen because it's also made out of cartilage. Yeah, and that barb literally just missed my face by a couple inches. The barb of a stingray is found halfway down the base of its tail and contains a powerful venom used for defense against larger animals. Although with a ray this large, I honestly have no idea what would threaten it. The stingray is flattened like this because it hides in the sand, and this is a hunting strategy and a defense strategy it uses to survive. What it does is it traps food underneath it and then gobbles it up with the mouth which is found underneath the stingray. It also can hide itself under the sand and bury it down so it protects itself against larger predators. The stingray has two spiracles on the top of its head which pumps water through its gills and the gills are found on the bottom of the stingray. So when it's buried in the sand, it's still able to breathe. Elsewhere on the diving expedition around Kanyo Island, there are magnificent displays of hard corals. Within those corals is an immaculate array of fish and invertebrates hiding from predators, just like the stingrays and the sharks. Above the reef, large schools of fish can black out the sun. These are all open ocean fish that are carried to the reef by a strong oceanic current that passes right by Kanyo Island. I am Justin Grubb and I am exploring the amazing country of Costa Rica, and so far, we hung out in the rainforest and went scuba diving around Caño Island. Our next move is to see the transitional forests of Manuel Antonio. Manuel Antonio is full of life and full of color, and here you can find tons of unique insects, amphibians, and lots of mammals, and a variety of reptiles, including large crocs and snakes. As soon as possible, we headed out into the forest with high hopes of getting a closer look at one of the rarest primates in Central America, and along with one of the world's laziest inhabitants. Look at this. All right, look right here. You see it right here? Oh wait, look at them. There's a whole troop of squirrel monkeys on there. This is one of the most rare species of primates in South America. They're one of the, they're the smallest primate here in Costa Rica, which means they're really susceptible to a lot of predation, especially from snakes and even large birds will just pick them up out of the trees and carry them off and eat them or feed them to their babies. Look at their tail. You see their tail? They don't really use that as a prehensile tail like all the other species of primates here. They use it more of a balancing tool because when they go across really small branches, they'll stick it out and it'll help them keep their balance. These guys are omnivorous. They'll eat fruits, they'll eat insects, they'll eat leaves, and uh, very small invertebrates. Now these guys can live in groups up to like 500 individuals, but because of habitat destruction and overdevelopment, those groups have gone down significantly. So you'll find smaller groups of 10, 20 individuals running around in the canopy in the rainforest. Now, these are one of the animals I was really hoping we'd find here in Costa Rica. I'm so excited that we actually found a squirrel monkey. The city of Capo sits right next to the park of Manuel Antonio. And this represents a problem that many parks and natural areas are facing all around the world. The situation where the border of the city and the park start to blend together. While in Capos, you can see many of the animals from the park navigating the streets and buildings of downtown. And here, several squirrel monkeys and a sloth are trying to use the power lines to make their way across a busy intersection. 
Endemic to the forests of Central America is the sloth, and both species of sloth can be uniquely observed here in Manuel Antonio. The three-toed sloth prefers the low elevation forests around Costa Rica, but the two-toed sloth can be found at higher elevations. The reason these animals move so slow is because they have a very low metabolic rate, and this is a result of their specialized diet of leaves, and leaves are very low in nutritional value. Now these animals move so slow that algae sometimes grows on their hair and helps provide some camouflage for these animals to blend into the trees and leaves around them. This incredibly fast slithering animal is the green vine snake. And, and I'm trying to be careful handling this animal because it is, in fact, venomous. And, and it uses this venom to immobilize its prey when hunting in the tree canopy. But it's a rear fang snake, and in order to inject the venom, it must chew on its prey. So personally, I'm not in a whole lot of danger because I'm much bigger than what this venom is intended for. So what they do when they flick their tongue is they're picking molecules out of the air and they're rubbing it against their Jacobson's organ, which is an organ in its head, which allows it to smell. So when it does that, it's actually smelling its environment, and it can pick up prey just like that by smelling them and finding them through the forest. To look at the color and the shape of this snake, it's obvious why it's called the vine snake. It uses its body to blend into the branches and leaves of the canopy, and this helps it hide from predators and prey. Coming up on Running Wild Costa Rica, we continue our journey in discovering fascinating wildlife and rare ecosystems. Next, I visit a marine rehabilitation center and encounter more sharks, this time on land. Then we head to the coastal jungle of Kuru in search of a curious primate and more. Finally, we hike the continental divide, and that's all coming up on part two. Stay tuned.